Hey, I thought I stopped that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today is August 1st, 2019. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going there, chat room? Oh my goodness, look at all the, look at all the friends we got here already. Wow, tuning in early. That's fantastic. Copper Beardy, thanks so much for the resub with your Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime, of course, you can get set up. If you have Amazon Prime, click the button right above the video here. There's a button there that says Twitch Prime. Click that. You can sign up for free, and you can subscribe to one channel, remove all the advertisements, and get all the cool emotes and benefits of being a subscriber. If you bring your Twitch Prime subscription to me on this channel, I'll make a donation to Coder Dojo, like I do with all of our subscriptions and cheers all quarter long. July, August, September, we're going to be donating to Coder Dojo. Thanks so much, Copper Beardy, for sharing your Twitch Prime sub with me. Welsh Ronaldo, good morning. McNerdius, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> CLW, that's Corey Hurricane Weathers. Good to see you. Make sure you check out Corey's stream. He's another one of the live coders. Uh, Coding Gorilla, hello, hello. Ancient Coder, good day. Great to see everybody here. Sean's here, hello, hello. Shy Sharp. Uh, scrolling down, Smab. Hey, how's it going? Um, nope, I didn't log what the project command is yet today. I'll do that in a little bit here as we get into what we're working on. Hey, Stelzy, Fixter Jake, starting the day with merge conflicts. Uh oh, that's never fun. We can talk about merge conflicts if folks have questions about what those are in a little bit. GG Feds, hey there. And uh, Unhip Coder, hello. Jason Bach is here. What's up? What's up indeed? Uh, I'm trying to find a witty retort. What's what's up? Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Um, yes. Yes, actually, Jack, they were. You need to answer the questions, okay? The Simeon, hello, hello. You set up the project for me? Fantastic. Did you? Ah, cool. Thank you very much. And, um... Let's see, gosh, we, we did a lot of really great work yesterday on g finishing authentication for our, our bla for our Blazor application. Um, we've got all the pieces in place. Now it authenticates and it brings back and it shows us appropriately whether or not you're logged in. We still need to add some things in to manage uh, roles, to man to uh, do some interaction so that we know who's a manager so that they can access manager things in our application. Um, but we know and we can pass back and forth whether or not you're a user that's logged in and some information about where to get your schedules inside the application. So I'm pretty happy with how that's set up. I'm wearing my Xbox hat today. Just felt right. I haven't worn this one in a while. It was, hey, let's, let's take a look at this. Twisted Aphid, very interested in WebAssembly stuff. Anything to not have to deal with JavaScript. Horses love JavaScript. Did you know that, T Twisted Aphid? Did you know that? Uh, movie product or cool session title, says Carrie. Bulletproof Blazer. I, I like that. That's pretty good. Um, I, would, uh, I would make that a cool session title. Absolutely. Um, did we move to client-side Blazor because the authentication didn't work on server-side Blazor? Asks Ancient Coder. No. We moved to client-side Blazor because it's matured and it's something that I think is, at this point, valuable to consider. Um, and it, I'll acknowledge the follow in a second here. Um, I also think that for, for where we're going into, we want to have that really great... Uh, performance that we're going to see client side when it runs on folks' mobile devices. So I think I think that makes a little bit more sense for us. I don't know. Yes, quit horsing around with JavaScript. Absolutely, Stelzy. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, DJ Design. I really appreciate that. And if if you want to uh, help us out here, we're trying to reach. My gosh, that spiked a little. We're trying to reach this goal right here. If we get to 8,000 followers before September 15th, I will dye my beard rainbow. We did it back in January, but I'll do it again for .NET Conf and TwitchCon. They're the same week, the last week of September. Um, help us out. Tell your friends, tell your families, tell your pets. Sign up. Sign up with Twitch. Throw us a follow over here and uh, help us reach that goal. 
and I will dye my beard rainbow as a salute to you. I'll be interviewing folks live at .NET Conf. I'll be, I'm, I might be hosting a session at TwitchCon. And I'll have a rainbow beard as a salute to you, our follower community. Tell your bots, yeah, tell your bots to follow also. I think for some folks did. <laughs> so, um, all right. I think we can we can start talking about our project here. We can get into this. I did update the bot. I went through and did a bunch of fixes, um, a bunch of changes yesterday. I worked on it a little bit last night. And I finished it up this morning before we got in here. So I think I saw, did I see John Callahan jump in here? John Calloway, there he is. Um, check this out. Look at this. Now, okay, I used the taco emote there, and it didn't put the taco on there. Right? DJ Design Old. Thank you for the follow. Now, see, wait a sec. That works coming from me, but it didn't work coming out of the bot. Oh, no, it did. Okay, it doesn't. It didn't render properly in chatty. There you go. Tacos, tacos. There we go. Everybody loves tacos. But it didn't, and it doesn't show up over there. That's weird. Why didn't the bot one render? See? Look at that. Hmm, that feels like a rendering issue, you know? Um, nothing else matters, says I've been working through the first workshop I did in Visual Studio Code is behaving like mine did during the talk. I had a snippet sent. Any info on solutions? Nothing. Uh, I need to uh, lean on them a little on that. Because it's doing the emote, emote when I do it, but when you do taco, it's just text. But it is just... Oh, I see what you're saying. It's being turned in... Yeah, I, the white's on my face. So I I was... This is actually a bit better than the way it was. Uh, we're going to go over to another one here in just a minute. Um, I need to use the actual taco emoji is what it looks like. Because I can do that. I know how to fix this. I know how to fix this. Tell you what, let's head over to the code and we can fix that. You know who we you know who I need to talk to about that code issue? You know who I need to talk to about it. We're gonna issue Great Scott! Great Scott, indeed. Um it's yeah, I, I think we can let's see if we can fix that taco emote real quick here and get that loaded in. There are ten different Scott commands? Nine or ten different Scott commands. Just ex exclamation point Scott in the chat room and we'll page Scott. Let's see if we can fix this taco command. That feels like an emoji um, loading issue. Dr. Scott! Uh, sure, we can page Dr. Scott too. I'm going to play Orchid today. There we go. This is music to code by from our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. Um, it's been scientifically designed. It's been engineered to get you in the groove, to get you in the flow. Really great stuff. Make sure... Where'd my camera go? There it goes. Make sure you check it out. Music to code by mtcb.pwop.com. It'll get you in the flow so you can focus on coding, homework, work around the house, yard work, whatever it might be. Check it out. And you can also execute the music command inside the chat room and it'll give you more information about it. You know what? I'm just going to go right to our code. Thanks so much, Carl. We appreciate you letting us listen to your music here on channel. That's so much better. It's this webcam. The colors on it aren't true. Not like this camera over here. So I went through and I, I applied a couple fixes here. Let's see if we can get that taco command working properly. Um, I'm going to go into my stream tools project here. And we'll take a shot at this. Um... Is that RG a mage? Really like the new reading stream. Great idea. Thank you. Did I adjust the audio levels? Yes, I adjust the audio levels. Yep. Pulled that back just a bit. Um, so I have... There it is. Right there. So what if I did this, right? And I chose... Isn't it in here? Where is it? Where's the taco? Is it under food? 
It's gotta be under food. That's not a taco, that's a dumpling. Taco. Yeah, that's what I want. Right? So if I do that... That should work, right? Do you want to save this file? Yes. Because I just put those in there and it didn't work. That should... That should work, right? Be a little bit better. And we're in a new month here. I need to to say that uh, we cleared off the cheer leaderboard. It's just here above me. Um, I'll save this and get this committed. Uh, we already did that. Yep, saved. And we will rebuild. Rebuild the bot. Uh, rebuild the bot. Okay, this is my stream tools project. This contains everything for the bot. Uh, reformatted the tacos command. The bot that you see running in channel, the bot that you see... Gary Payette. Let's get this party started. It's, it's like over here. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get that cheer in here. Thanks so much for that. And there we go. So I just sent that, right? I just published it. There it is. I'm going to tag it. I just tagged 15 zero. So I will rebuild with 1.15.1 because I changed that over. Alka! Why didn't it read that? Raining the stream with 15 viewers. Alka, thanks so much for the raid. Thanks so much for the host. Welcome, raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz, and we're going to write a little bit of code today, working on Blazor, working on doing some data interaction from client-side and web assembly out to a server-side API. Thanks so much for the raid, Alka. What were, uh, what were you doing over there on your stream before, we came o before you uh, joined us over here? Can we get a shout-out for Alka? Alka, of course, is another one of the live coders streaming on the live coders team. You can see information about the live coders if you click the live coders link right over there. We also have a live coders command here in the chat room that'll take you to the team page and you can see all the folks, 65 in total, that are writing code live here on Twitch. Uh, folks like Alka, folks like CLW, that's Corey Hurricane Weathers, who's also doing some great stuff with Blazor. Carrie Payette, she's another one of us that's hanging out there. She's doing great stuff with IoT, Internet of Things development, working with hardware and putting together some software to support that. Really great stuff. I encourage you to check out the Live Coders team. Alka is rewriting a Node.js package in TypeScript. Ooh, welcome to TypeScript. Um, a lot of folks that I know that are comfortable with JavaScript, they feel a little, they feel a little strange the first time that they use TypeScript because they start to get into some of the formality of it. Some of the, um, right, some of the, the strong typing, but, um, where that takes you then is in a place where you'll end up having code that compiles and does that type check for you ahead of time. Um, and some of the new features of JavaScript that aren't ready yet, you actually get access to ahead of time um, because TypeScript will compile it down to JavaScript and make it work no matter what. So you think you're an over the, uh, the initial hump? Oh, terrific. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Satisfied pair. Welcome. TypeScript is great. I agree. TypeScript is a really great language. I need to spend some more time writing better TypeScript when I'm when I need to target JavaScript. But we're learning about Blazor here, so we don't have to write JavaScript at all. We can just write C sharp, and you're going to see a little bit of that here in a minute. Um, <laughs> take care. Great to see you. Satisfied pair. Or if I don't know, are you taking off? RG Mage asks, what software do I use for capturing my video? I use, this is OBS that I use over here. Um, OBS, the Open Broadcaster Software, allows me to capture all the cameras, the sounds, 
Um, and it, it allows me to... Well, do your best. To do my best. Thank you. Thank you, Headley Lamar. Um, and easily shift between things. I've got a couple stream decks here to configure things. Let's, uh... Hey, Caparino. Yeah, we're going to try that tacos command here in just a second. Let me restart the bot. So we get the new bot running, which is going to reset... It'll reset the sentiment analysis number over here. That's all right, though. We're early in the stream here. I'm not too, too concerned about that. Let me reset the attention screen. There we go. Now let's try that tacos command. No, it's not working at all now. Now I've completely broken it. What did we do? What did we do? There we go. Just took a second. Had to load up. Had to get all the things. Uh, let's see here. So if we end the Scott command, should still... Yeah. It was just slow the first time because it was still starting up and connecting to everything. There we go. Now we've got the tacos appearing. And, of course, they're going to be appearing and going flying by us here on screen. Um, that 60.2 should have an arrow next to it at some point. Come on, sentiment analysis. Where did my arrow go? Um, <laughs> let's see, over here. Disappeared, it'll come right back. And what, and then? Nope, no arrow, and I changed the end then. Look at that, it's got the emote with it now. So you'll always get, it. there's the arrow. All right, feeling better about that. Abby Fabby, good morning. Great to see you. Thanks for joining me over here, Abby Fabby. Um, what are live coders? Live coders are amazing people that write code live here on Twitch. Um, so I've got some other things in here to do for the, ch uh, for the bot. Um, I don't want to spend time on this today because I, I really want to focus on our Blazor project and get that, get, get that minimum viable delivered um, this is in my stream tools repository it has everything to run the bot everything to run that sentiment analysis number that you see over there the the github ticker that you see up at the top the crawl that's showing all the folks that have contributed um, no questions are being replied to by the bot is that broken uh, I hope not Live coders are your excuse not to study. Nice. Hey, HB list down. Good to see you. Um, let me look here. I don't see it analyzing the questions. Because it normally comes up and shows me that it analyzed a question. Now, there it is. So you look at that, it says what language, it doesn't say what language I'm speaking in. It just, be, it's not, it's AI, it's not great. All right, let's, um, let's go over to our resource management project. I, that's not where I wanted to go in. Look at that hair! <laughs> um, here we are, the resource management project. So this is a project that's managing resources, managing people and their schedules, uh, volunteers, employees, trainers for an equine therapy facility called Sebastian Riding Associates. Um, and we've got a pull request here. Sean, enhance the formatting of the nav, nav bar login. Oh, did you go and, and fix the login button there? Nice. I guess what the URLs would be for manage and register actions in the user controller. All right. Let's just take a quick peek here. Um, <laughs> I don't care about the white space. Uh, let's see. Yep, got rid of the user image because we don't have one yet. Simplified and, and put the correct classes on here. Nice, thank you, Sean. And in the nav menu, 
Okay, set those to is active false to start for the management reports and the login. Now, why is the login before the management re report? Oh, you removed it there. So where's the login go? Oh, you put it up front. As a separate nav. Aha. Very cool. All right, let's merge this in. That's great stuff. Uh, thank you for the contribution. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. So that's in our feature schedule UI, and I need to merge this at some point. So we end up with a little bit smaller footprint. We've got just so many things inside that um, inside that branch that we need to, to deal with here. The famous philly.net hat, qu hat question. Yes, and it did appear. No, Jason. It's actually, I pre-programmed it into the Q&A. <laughs> um, let's see here. You used row reverse to format it earlier. Ah. Oh my gosh. The follically challenged chats. Yes, I did cheat, Jason. Sorry about that. All right, let's head over to the resource management program. Here it is. And let's jump in, see where we left off. And Carrie had a cheer there. So I mentioned about cheers. Um, every cheer, of course, we donate to whatever the charity is that we're supporting that quarter. We've uh, designated for that quarter. Um, and whoever has the most cheers at the end of the month Ken is extended an offer to join me here for a pair programming stream. Michael Jolly, Robert Tables, and Carrie Payette. I need to reach out and schedule some time with you to get you in here. Um, and, uh, and we're going to do some code together here live on stream. Carrie finished top again for July. So that's three months. If you want to designate, if you want to share that with someone else, Carrie, you're more than welcome to. Um, but congratulations and thank you for being our top cheerer for the month of July. Really great stuff. Thank you. Ancient Coder asks, what is the most updated branch in the repository? Right now it's that feature schedule UI branch. Um, right, if I look at the code, this is in the shared one. It's this one here, feature schedule UI. I should get rid of this one. I should delete that branch. And what I need to do, see it's merged, go away. I don't need that branch anymore. Um, I should merge this into dev and, and more or less cut a branch maybe for each week that I'm developing so that I don't get too far off because this is diverged significantly. Look at that, 68 commits that we've diverged. It's a it's, it's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, look at that hype. Thank you so much for the hype. Nice font rendering, says Caparino. What resolution and DPI do I use? Um, I broadcast at 1920 by 1080. That's 1080p that you're seeing here live on Twitch or if you're watching on YouTube, on the YouTubes. Um, but I'm also broadcasting at 60 frames a second. So I'm at 100% uh, rendering here on the screen and 100% scaling. And uh, yeah, you're getting very high resolution and a very high frame rate if you're getting uh, everything properly delivered to you. And I'm also delivering at, uh, th it's about 3,600 uh, kilobytes a second is what I'm seeing going across. And melting my computer, no, I'm not melting it. It's actually the, the um, fan barely runs when I'm when I'm working like this. When I, the, actually the high def camera here is coming off of a second machine that's doing all the high def rendering over there. Copper Beardy with the Imperial Derp. Nice. Nice. Yep, 1080p, 60 frames a second. I can do this. And it looks really cool. So. We need a smarter bot to detect most asked questions to add to the knowledge base. Yeah, we need to come back around and work on that. Hey, Binary Chef, good to see you. 
Um, so that's the current branch, and I, I, we should talk about our branching strategy, my branching strategy, my terrible branching strategy here at some point. See if we can improve that. Yeah. Can't even watch 1080p 60, let alone push it. That's okay. So because I'm a partner here on Twitch, a partner here on Twitch, it'll scale down gracefully for you. Um, whether you're watching on your phone, you're watching on a tablet, you're watching, you're watching with your Xbox on a big screen TV. Sure. Might be scary. Not even my mother will watch on a big screen TV. It's because I scare her that much. It's the blue hair. The blue hair scares everybody, right? Look at that. Woohoo! All right. 60 frits per second. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, need purple hair, says Janescu. Funny you should say that. I had somebody yesterday, a couple somebodies yesterday, um, on a meeting say you should do the hair purple for TwitchCon and .NET Conf. Let's see about that. We'll see about that. Um, all right, let's jump back into our code and, and start talking about the project again. And I'll record the cheer here as we get into the, because I record all of our cheer graffiti, just like this one here from Electric Havoc, so that I, we can salute and recognize you in the code that you cheered for. So, um, we've been slowly retrofitting and, and we, we're now at a point that our code, um, runs client side in the browser along with some microservices. It's not microservices, some web services that run on the server. We can break those out as microservices later, if that makes sense, deploy them appropriately and in a, whatever configuration we need as this application grows. But we're, at, we're trying to just get to this minimum viable, uh, minimum viable product. So we're just trying to get it done. We migrated it over to Blazor client side with WebAssembly and Blazor allows us to write C Sharp and use Razor templates to mix and match and deliver HTML along with some rich components here that we can use. Lennon just resubscribed for 12 months, one year. Happy well, to support this community for the past year. Oh my gosh, Lennon. Thanks so much for, for the resub. Absolutely. One year. Congratulations. Thanks so much. And that's going to put, put you into... It, you see all of our... Um, all of our subscribers in chat have a little hat icon next to them. That's their loyalty badge. And uh, it gradually changes. You can see... There's a panel just below me here on Twitch that'll show you all the different hats you get as you stick around and you help out, you, you subscribe to our community. Every subscription, every cheer, we donate to whatever organization it is that we're supporting that quarter. This quarter, we're supporting Coding Coder Dojo. So thanks so much, Lennon. I really appreciate that. Lennon joined us for a uh, pair programming stream. A, a few months ago and helped us build that sentiment analysis number that you see over there. Wow, the sentiment's not too good right now. We need that tacos command. Somebody break out the tacos. Thank you for the follow. This is David. I appreciate you joining us and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. We need some we need some tacos. Somebody send tacos around. Not burritos. Hey, look at the tacos. Tacos makes everything happy. Some guy eating tacos and nachos. Who is that? Happy, joy, excitement, and smiles. See that we're getting we're getting our sentiment number set up. More tacos. Everybody loves tacos, right? See that helping the sentiment. <laughs> uh, see, but this is good. This is making everybody happy. It's it's wonderful. We love seeing that. All right, I'll get back on the code. Okay, all right. Squirrel. Okay, let's get to it. Sunshine Bunny's Flowers. Yeah, John knew it would work. Look at that. And we've got top. Um, I like the suggestion that we got of changing the and then command to the and then emote. So now when we hear and then, we see and then go fly by. I think that works. I think that works really nicely. Um, I need to merge in the changes here from, uh, from Sean. So let me... Let me drop down into uh, into my 
git con my command line execute some git commands here i'm going to pull in the upstream feature schedule ui i'm using posh git plugged into my powershell console here so that i can get all these great integrated git commands including right here on the prompt showing me what branch i'm on and how many changes i am from from the uh my origin location so uh thank you for the follow king peter 2019 i appreciate you joining us and look forward to seeing you in the chat room um all right so we've got that merged in let me show you how the app <clears throat> let me show you how the application looks right now um oh my goodness can't help but support keep up the awesome streams as an intern working on ask paul summer it's been a great time tuning in thank you so much jake um that is tremendous uh five thousand bits jake that is tremendous we'll make a donation to coder dojo <clears throat> wow i'm 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 a little taken back that is awesome um and uh yeah, we'll we'll make that donation. That's that puts you right to the top of the leaderboard, so we can invite you in and have a pair programming stream here. Thank you very very much for that. Wow. Oh my goodness. And I will get that cheer graffiti in here in just a second. Um, what mischief indeed. Uh, Svava, great to see you. Wow. Oh my gosh, Jake. I'm 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 blown away. Yeah, but a, a bit war indeed. Woo. Um, <laughs> let's liven up the mood with with some JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh my goodness. So Sean gave us this update. I I like seeing the register and logins. I think register should work. Um, no, actually, I don't think that's going to go to the right place here. Um, we can fix that. That's not too bad to fix. Uh, but login should route me appropriately over here. Use a local account. So we're going to be under its identity register is where that is. So we'll log in and now we can do availability and management reports. So there's my availability. We need to load the data for this, but it is properly showing my name here. I get a good sign out button. I click sign out. So we gotta fix that. A uh, copper beardy, you weren't following, or you're playing with the numbers here. I don't know. Okay, so I'm seeing, so I'm seeing a couple of, uh, a couple of fixes that we need to put in here, and we can continue moving through. Hey, Fanny Rinders, great to see you. Um, Free battle. He's showing us the latest. Thank you, Copper Beardy. I I appreciate you doing that. Um. Thanks. I completely missed that up there. I'll add some. <clears throat> I'll add some blurring there as well. Um, taking some notes on that. All right. So I need, uh, we have the logout doesn't work properly. Um, and that's because of the, uh, where is it? The cookies provider. And we just, we're using the default one so we can get rid of that. Uh, the register link uh, goes to the wrong location. That's okay, that's easy to fix. Um, we want to turn off nav links for availability and the manager report if you don't have access or aren't logged in. Right. So here's my here's my quick and dirty to do list of some easy to fix bugs that we can address here. So that's not too bad, and we're going to do these all. All of these we're going to we're going to do inside of our client side uh, C Sharp and Razor templates. Um, great. 
Let's go through and fix that. Yep, we're going to need a manage link as well. Um, I'm going to have to... Uh, pardon me for a minute here. Thank you, Smab. <clears throat> I'm going to turn off the follower alert temporarily. Um, and I'm going to have to go to the overlay. Pardon me for just a minute here while I deal with this. We got to deal with this. My apologies. There we go. And maybe we'll turn that on a little bit later. Um, I don't mind friendly trolls. I don't mind folks that are joining us and want to want to poke some fun and, and say some funny things. I don't mind that. Um, I actually encourage that because it makes things a little bit interesting. Um, but I think uh, when folks come in here and um, they're cursing, they're racist, they're, they're taking away from, from some of the, some of the vibes, some of the, the good positive things that we're doing together here on channel. Um, so I, um, throw new unexpected stream trolls exception. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, renegade VI asks other than notepad, what other software dev to do project management softwares do you use? Um, fierce kittens is here. That's, that's what I use. I use fierce kittens. I ask her, Hey, can you help out with this? And, and she just manages things and makes it go away. Um, what I do a lot, this comes packaged with GitHub. You can use this for free with your projects over here. There are project boards that you can go into and you'll get that same um, Kanban board experience here in GitHub that you can use. There's a similar one in Azure DevOps that you can use as well. There you go, you can see some of the ones that I'm working on here. Um, actually, I, th I think we're done this one. We're almost done that one. But you can see some of the things that we've been, we've got laid out here that we wanna work on. Um, and this is actually the one that we're gonna hit today, expanding schedules on the server so that it supports manager view. Um, but those are two good ones. Um, I know a lot of folks use Trello. Fierce Kittens uses Trello. It's a really great cap uh, capability. Um, thank you, Smab. Thank you. Um, I think we've got a couple folks with mod swords around that can help out here today. Azure DevOps is very nice. Yep, I'm glad I don't have chat displaying here right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Notepad, <laughs> Notepad is superior. Um, what a lot of folks on my teams use for managing documents besides the tasks that are here in in a Kanban board is they'll use a OneNote to complement this. Um, OneNote you can use to, you can throw Word documents, you can put Excel tables in there. 
uh, images, all kinds of stuff. And it's it's nice to be able to have all of that in one place, in one doc, one, yeah, one set of documents um, that you can share on Teams. We I use Teams extensively. Gee, I wonder why. Um, look at who my employer is. And we can put that... Um, we can put that inside the team discussion so everybody has access to that one note and you can see all the documentation for the current projects. Glow boards by Git Kraken. There's another good one. Thank you, Mason, for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, Trello, Jira with the client. Yep, there you go. GitHub is for a free solution for working on a personal project. This is tremendous to have this capability and the board integrates with your issues and as you close issues they get moved automatically to done so that's that's really great trello is completely free a lot of folks use that and tr trello you're not coupled to a software project so you can use that for all kinds of project planning that you might be doing so vsts kanban folks have used before yeah yeah Notepad's nice when I just have... Well, let me write down just a couple things here that I need to take care of. And I don't want them to last longer than 5-10 minutes. Um, except for when you get... Squirrel! And you need to look away for a little bit here, you know? Are the boards on GitHub free for private repos as well? Yes, they are. Yep, absolutely. You can integrate Trello with Slack. Oh, that? Yeah. Yep. The A lot of the boards you'll see you can integrate using IFTTT if this then that right um i think i can show you ifttt um so yeah ifttt is really really nifty um, so right you can look at all the different services that are available if i look at my yep i have elect my amazon alexa wired up i have I don't use Evernote anymore, but I do have my iOS photos, my OneDrive, my Philips Hue, there's Twitch. So when I, uh, when I go live here on Twitch, I actually have a couple of tasks that run. Is it going to show me my applications here somewhere? If I click on this, I have it. There we go. Um, if a new stream is started by me, submit a new link to Reddit. And if I start a new uh, a new stream, I actually have it submit a webhook into a couple places on Discord to announce that I started a new stream. So I have that automatically done just when I click the go live button here. You can do this with other things that you might be using, right? So you can have it uh, you can have it scan your email for things. I have it send emails. Um, Send. I have it send me emails is what it does. You, I have uh, a thing over here. This this triggered last night. Um, when I export videos to YouTube, it posts a tweet to my channel. Right? Easy. Simple. But you can integrate this with Trello. You can integrate this with GitHub. All kinds of stuff to be able to automatically track and do interactions. Heck, you can even do things where if, if something happens on the board... Right, I can trigger my, I could trigger my Philips Hue lights if I wanted. So, yeah, Smab, I, I exported those videos and I did one right after the other after the other and they took forever to render on YouTube. Literally, I did them at about 8, 9 o'clock my time and they didn't arrive until like 1 a.m. I was, in, it was insane. Hey, Robert Tables. Uh, Discord announcements. I don't have it going into my Discord. I have it going into other folks' Discords. So, Methodology asks, is Microsoft Flow the same thing as IFTTT? Yes. Yes, it is. So, yeah, I exported like 10 videos last night um, from Twitch, and it they all landed at about the same time, where normally... They, they arrive like 20 minutes, half hour apart. They all arrived within like five minutes of each other. And I, I can't control that. <laughs> they just kind of all happened. So, all right. Um, so here's the list of things that I want to address inside of our project. Getting back into this. Squirrel. There it is, the squirrel. Um, and uh, uh, I hope nobody in looking at all those tweets... 
I hope you didn't freak out. It wasn't that bad. Um, you couldn't do what you wanted with Flow. Flow is new. Microsoft Flow is very new and it's growing. Um, they're throwing a lot of people at that project to make sure that it delivers that integrated logical programming experience. When this thing happens, go do that other thing, right? That's something That's something that non-technical folks, the muggles in our industry, um, they can figure out how to work with, right? And I use, I use the term muggle to refer to non-technical folks in a, in lovingly, right? I mean, these are folks, when you, ex when you refer to somebody who is non-technical as a muggle, it, it makes it clear for a lot of folks, oh, sure, they don't understand what this means, right? Those are things that we need to explain and make it a little bit clearer, right? Take an extra second and, and explain that to someone, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you take that second or two to explain to folks. Muggles at Microsoft. There are. There are. Absolutely. Flow works with products other than Microsoft now? Yes, I think so. I believe so. Uh, they changed the tier, and so I have to change my flow in the next few months for it. I haven't, I haven't worked with it yet, Core Bob. I'm really into uh, IFTTT. I've been wired into that for years now. Uh, the unwashed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, no, no. Um, all right. So let's let's fix some of these and let's make sure we log our cheers here as we're going along. So the register link in the login control. So Blazor has this sense of components and I have everything for this inside of this uh, everything that's in our WebAssembly generated project is this web client project here. And I have pages. These are my components that we're going to be sharing for folks. Yes, Robert Tables is here. Um, he's actually I uh, he's working he's working on a really cool bot and can we get a shout out for Robert Tables um, there's a there's a feature that he's building where he's going to be able to with his bot see if folks are are asking him to come join their channel right if, if, let me know if, if that's it's SO for Robert Tables there we go um, and what and right so I I jokingly say when we say containers three times, we're beetle juicing, we're paging Robert Tables, um, and that's that's a pretty neat feature. the The ability to to have a bot that says, "Oh, I'm needed in that channel," Th that's terrific, you know. To and without having to, you have to ask me nicely. Without having to ask nicely, and and you know, oh yeah, sure, they're talking about something I'm interested in. Yes, like a bat signal. Um, that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a really neat idea. Um, it feels like something that Twitch should should integrate at some point, right? That, oh, there's a topic discussion over here that's been going on for X amount of time that I'm interested in. Maybe I should go join that channel. Right? Once I join that channel, I can participate. And now you're raising the awareness and viewership on Twitch. That's something. So, you are not a fail mod, Fierce Kittens. Twitch can make an offer for the idea. Yes, they can. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the right sound effect to play to answer that. Okay. So, let's, um, let's fix this register link. So, my register link is in a shared component here for the login navigation. There it is. So, instead of going to user register, that's actually a web page that lives on the server in the identity area. I'll look at pages, it's under account, register. So I need to go identity, uh, account, manage, register. So let's go, to, so this is going to be, right, Ident identity, account, register. Okay, and sign in is, we've got that correct and sign out because those two are a challenge on the serve, on the uh, API, on the user API and it forces to the appropriate location. So I think I've got that right. Um, <laughs> they'll probably use it without compensating you. Eh. Uh, it would it would take 200 grand to move to San Fran. Easy, easy. And if you actually know what you're talking about, they're hiring junior developers at some of these companies at 400 grand. You're, for for the expertise that, that Fierce Kittens brings, um, you, you better be talking at least 500, at least. Because she's a killer developer. She's another member of our live coder stream uh, team, and you're gonna. She's writing code 
tomorrow night, Friday night, live on the Fierce Kittens channel. They'll want you to implement a BST on a freaking wayboard. Yeah, well, and they won't get you then. You got 20 bucks. What's that get you in San Francisco? That gets you a latte. That's about it. Hey, thanks for the shout out there, Robert Tables. Appreciate that. So that should fix the, fix the register link. So I think we've got that addressed. Uh, logout doesn't work properly. The cookies provider reference there. So this one, we're going to need to write a little bit of code. And I'm going to save these cheers for when we get to the new code that we're working on. Um, that is going to be inside of our user controller, right? Because this is going to user sign out. That's actually right here in my user controller. I have user sign out. There it is. HTTP context, sign out async, and we're passing this. We're just using the default scheme, so we don't even need to define the scheme we're signing out from. It'll just sign out using the default sign out scheme. That's good. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, I didn't know you lived in San Francisco, kittens. Oh my goodness. Here in the old, uh, good old Midwest, junior devs start out around 45. Yeah, it's about 45, 50 uh, here in the Philadelphia area. You can go 20 minutes one way into D.C., 20 minutes the other way, and you're in the mountains. Yes, in the in the mid-Atlantic. Oh, Northern Virginia. Okay, I, the order of uh, chats confused me there. Uh, all right, so that should fix the sign-out for that. Nav links for availability and manager report if you don't have... Uh, we, for the nav links and manager report... Um, hide if you don't have access or aren't logged in. So that's back inside of our project. Da, 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 da. Where'd it go? Nav menu. This one. Um, here. Availability. So I want to hide that if you are not um, if you're not signed in. So I could do a couple different things here. Um, right? Is there a security check here? Uh, no. Okay. So what I could do, right, I could say at if, do I have context? No. Um, <laughs> where did we, where were we working on that yesterday where we got context so we could get your information? I think it was here in the availability. That. Let, let's grab that. And I'll explain what this is. So whenever I do say at code here, I can put inline C sharp code inside of our template here that'll be executed as it gets rendered. So we're going to receive the context, and the context has information about who's logged in. So I can say uh, user. Oh, I need to await it, don't I? Um. Let's call this context async. And let's have authentication state context. Uh, set that appropriately. I need, because it's being passed in um, asynchronously, I need to actually await it on init. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be an async task. And I'm going to say context equals await context async. Now, why don't you like that? You make me sad. Why doesn't this like it? Oh, it's already private. That's why. Um, oh, wow. I'm looking at all the discussion of cost of living here in the chat room. Ooh. Wow. That should work. So now if I go up here, I should be able to... Yeah, there you go. Now I can say context user, and I can say... Um, I should be able to say is logged in. Identity dot is authenticated. 
So if you are logged in, show the availability report. Um, the management report, we need to detect if you're a manager and we don't have that capability yet. But for right now, I'm going to include them in that same is authenticated. But we're going to need to add an extra check to figure out if somebody belongs to a manager role and add that. Um, all right. Let's make sure this builds. Nope. On init async cannot be private. I'm probably, am I changing it there? I think it should be protect, protected, right? Yeah, cost of living in London, cost of living in uh, Manassas, Virginia, right up against, as you get closer to some of those big cities, the, the capitals, right? Pri cost of living is just huge, crazy stupid. Um, all right, that worked. So let's give this a shot. Anybody interested in me opening up the live share today and allowing folks to connect in so they can run the application locally in their browser? <laughs> um... I, I, I see Fierce Kitten's comment there and I'm not going to I'm not going to further expand on that. <laughs> That's referencing another another company and I'm not going to um, talk about them here on stream. Uh, why isn't this loading? Did I break something? I I might have. Uh, F twelve isn't even opening the developer tools. No. Let's see. Oh yeah, I did a dandy here. Look at this. Uh -uh. Oh boy. Hmm. You trash companies all the time. I know you do. Um, that's not something I can do. Uh, well, this is a problem. I feel really good about this. Uh, oh my! I know, right? My my browser is um. It it done broke. I'm using the Canary version of Edge, and uh, that doesn't look too good. Why does it say there's nine edges running? Goodbye. Um, let's try this one more time. Uh, yeah. Not sure. Um, well, actually, this is the the uh, Chrome version of Edge. Yeah the Chrome based version of Edge and it's sure broken. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to change browsers because that sure looks broken. See, I use Edge Canary. Um, and I'm going to change that to Firefox from Canary. You can have it run in multiple browsers at once so you can see everything at the same time. It across browsers. So here we go. Ooh. That's not working either. Okay, maybe it wasn't Edge. I can't... Yeah, look at that. Stop. Ho ho! Oh boy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, maybe that was me. <laughs> I broke it, Jack. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling it doesn't like this. Know what I mean? Let's see if I can move that in here. Now it's still going to be 
right? It's still... If I want to hide navigation items, is there a thing here? Oh, is disabled. Yes. Equals context user uh, identity is authenticated. I want to do a reverse of that. Right, maybe that's what we ran into here. And I'm just going to copy that right into the manager one right there. Let's try changing this back to edge. I like to try the latest and greatest things. I like to... I like to be dangerous. A rebel, Dotty. Um, nice to know WebAssembly can break browsers. Yeah, right? Um, I don't think that was WebAssembly so much as it was, as it was a, right, a bad component behavior in there. Nope, that component looks like it's still not working properly. It downloaded everything, but poof, nothing. Now I've done it. Okay. Let's get rid of that all to, or is it, is it doing this? Let me put that back up in there. Just pause that and see what happens. Uh, game development is... Wow. Uh, yeah, folks that are down on game development there. Have you any experience in that industry? There's a lot going on there. That loaded. That did not. All right. So, it feels like this isn't working. These is disabled, right? Because that's the only thing that we changed here. Right? Otherwise, we're going to start rolling everything back and figuring out where I where I broke things here. Let's see what happens. It might be the context. It could be. Right? I see it loading there. See that that worked. I think it's I think it's the component, the blazer strap component that we're using here isn't letting me hide and remove things. Um, right, if I say is disabled equals true, let's see what that does. Uh, Robert Tables talks about how Ro uh, Adam13531 is making his game. Lana Lux, another one of the live coders, is really helpful to learn from. She's been doing a lot of really cool stuff with managing the various assets and then writing the code necessary for her application. Really great stuff that, that Lana's working on there and, and to learn from. I, I've got to say, really great stuff there. Um, so that disabled properly, and maybe we can... See what's going on there. Um, Shelp SC2 just hosted the stream. Thanks so much for that. Uh, Tim Bodet is another great one. Yes, absolutely. The game developers out, out here on Twitch really are doing some neat stuff. So that did work. So if I change that now to right context user identity is authenticated and I want that to be the not on that let's see if that works 
Can I stringify the context dot users? I don't know. Okay. Building, building, building. Come on. Let's go. Right? No. I think the code that's being executed here, right? Do I need to put an at in front of that, maybe? No. See, look at that. This isn't being executed properly. What if... Well, wait. Context might not be a thing while it's trying to render. I tried using the if statement. Right, I don't think... I could wrap this whole container in an if statement. Right, if context is null. Right, if we don't have a context, don't render anything. That could help with this, right? Let's see if that does it. I tried, yeah, the if statement I thought would have worked, but. Let's see here. Bueller. Bueller. Come on. Bueller. Hey, look at that. That worked. Bueller. Oh, okay, Ben. Thanks. Shouldn't init occur before render? Well, it's an asynchronous init. So it's not necessarily done yet. Um. So that worked. Disabled is one thing, right? They're disabled, I can't click on them. I don't want you to even see it. So maybe we take these. Can we bring that down into here? Right, and... Uh, if context does not equal null, then show that. And context.user... Uh, identity is authenticated. Start there, right? See how that looks. Hey, rambling geek. Good to see you. Svava says asynchronous and it sounds like a band name. Eh, it's one of those tech things. You know the jargon that we have here in this industry. It sounds like... Seeing as how the VP is such a VIP, shouldn't we keep the PC on the QT? Because if it leaks to the VC, you can end up in MIA and then we'd all be put on KP. See, that confuses the heck out of me too. Bingo, that worked the way that I wanted it to. If I log in now, it should appear up at the top. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. 60% of the time, it works every time. It does. And then? Um, we need to define what a manager is so that we can put it on there, but I don't have a way to assign people to a manager yet. So we'll need some sort of role management user interface. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. I could do something as simple as just having an array in my app settings of here's the usernames that are managers and give them a manager claim or something. Manager role. Oh, you'll tell me what a manager is, Robert Tables? What's a manager? <laughs> so sign out should now work properly, right? Except I stopped the application. Way to go, Jeff. Way to go. Let's make sure that. Uh, we need to remove the is disabled on those. Uh, good idea. Don't need that anymore. Okay. So there's that. If I log in, boom, log in. And sign out. 
sign out. That didn't work. Right, sign out should have signed me out. Hmm. I mean, it's definitely going to the sign out page. No, it's not evil programming. Everything is awesome. Awesome. It's amazing. Um. Okay. Let's, well, I can't do the sign out. That's not going to work. Let's do this. I'm going to open, yep, private browser, go to the application. Register should go to the right place. Yeah, register went to the right place. Okay. Um, so I'm, that's okay. So we fixed that. Log out, we need to figure out. Um, yeah, I don't have a privacy policy yet. So, and I don't have a privacy link. Um, okay. Why doesn't the sign out button work? Why, 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 why? Let's go over to that controller, the user controller here. Sign out. String with the scheme, default sign out scheme, authentication properties. What are the authentication properties? The plot thickens. Um, yeah, it should have cleared it. Right? Um, the redirect items parameters. Hmm. No, the the this should have happened, and because it, right, you see that happen, and then it does the redirect. Any thoughts? Why aren't we using the sign-in manager? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Let's try that. So if we have the sign-in manager, I'm gonna control dot on this. Create and initialize a field for sign-in manager. I don't like it, call it that. I'm going to instead call it, because it's a private object, I'll call it underscore sign, sign in manager. So then down here, right, the challenge async, that's like bare minimum default to do that. Um, I should be able to say sign in manager, sign in async. Well, and right, it's going to sign you in with a I want to do the challenge to route them over to the actual sign-in page, right? Um, the, there is a sign-out over here, isn't there? Yeah, log out. There it is. It receives the sign-in manager. Sign-in manager, sign-out async. Right there. So I should be able to do the same thing here. Right? I think I think ancient coder is right there. You can sign both with the user manager and the sign in manager. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Get that loaded up. And all right. Close that other browser. Uh, there we go. So I'm already signed in. 
There it was. Ancient coder with the win. Look at that. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it all gets handled with Azure B2C. It's completely magic. All security is magic. Just ask Barry Dorans. Um, somebody clip that. All security is magic. Just ask it. <laughs> Barry Dorans. That's gonna that's gonna go over real well. I can tell. Um, one second here. What's going on? All right. Um, look at that. Our friend Nick Landry is at Gen Con. Make sure you say hello to Dryad T and Quill Tony at the event. Good friends. All right. Um. Oh my gosh, we're being raided by Relevant Jesse. Relevant Jesse, thanks so much for the raid. Um, welcome, raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz, and we're writing a little bit of code with Blazor this morning. We're building an application to manage users, to, to manage volunteers, employees at an organization, uh, a nonprofit organization. And we're, we're doing this all with Blazor, client-side, in the browser, using WebAssembly. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, what were you doing, uh, Jesse? What was going on over on your stream earlier today? Can I get a shout-out for relevant Jesse? Jesse's another one of the live coders on the team. Uh, yeah, Robert Tables with the clip there. Um, and... Uh, Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get in I'm going to get in good trouble with that one. <laughs> Thank you, Robert Tables. Um So you're doing some C# -sharp WinForms refactoring. Nice. Just started your stream, realized you have sprint planning starting soon. Oops. Oops. Where's a good place to learn ASP.NET for someone who has used C# -sharp before? Asks Phaser193. Phaser, we just did a a full day workshop showing a little bit of ASP.NET Core and explaining how it works. Um, we did it live here on stream, but the video is archived and available on the YouTube channel. Um, check it out, youtube.com slash, ah, there you go, Ancient Coder with the link. And uh, it's it was uh, just a few weeks ago. It's one of the top videos if you look on my channel. There's one from a year ago using ASP.NET Core 2.1, and there's the new one we just did with ASP.NET Core 2.2. I need to create a, just a, uh, a playlist up at the top that is just um, just the workshops that we've done because there's some really great videos in there. Tim Von Monero. Yeah, live coders are the best. So Tim's another one of our live coders. Fierce Kittens is a live coder. Relevant Jesse. Lots of great folks. All kinds of disciplines. We need I need to put together some sort of a page and get some recruit some help to put together a page that shows all the folks that are writing code live. Um, it, actually, our friend um, Sushi Day um, put together this page, Belly IO, for folks that like food and folks that like programming. If you want to watch food on Twitch, well, here's a great list of folks that are talking about food right now on Twitch. There you go. Maybe you like programming? All right, that's great. Here's a cool list of all the folks that are talking about programming right now, live on Twitch. Um, you might recognize a couple of these folks. So that's really great. That's belly.io, and that's from our friend Sushi Codes. You see her on the weekends. She's Sushi Day when she's uh, cooking in the kitchen, doing some really great stuff. Is there a way to get into the live coders? You know about the GitHub page. Yeah, on the GitHub page, submit a pull request. Uh, open an issue. I'm sorry, don't submit a pull request. Open an issue um, and answer the questions there on the application. And uh, I review it once every couple weeks and decide who to add. But we're looking for folks that are uh, positive and outgoing, answering questions in the chat room. Um, Kittens is not positive and outgoing. She's nasty. She's mean. No, no, she's not. 
Um, she just doesn't take any junk from the uh, from the trolls. Uh, code phobia. There's another one of our life coders. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're just looking for positive, outgoing folks that are writing code, and uh, and it doesn't have to always be writing code. Kittens does other things. Vex Vex FX is on the team. He's doing some great stuff with with hardware and programming on a stream, but he also does some neat stuff with Hollywood style special effects. Really great stuff. He's a very tremendous and creative streamer you got to check out um so all kinds of great folks we, we've got folks that do 3d printing on the team folks that do sap maybe you're into sap that's okay we've got folks that do sap that you can learn from as well so i think we've all right so we got the sign in fixed we got the register link working we've and we'll fix some of the branding here later that's minimum viable i don't i'm not worried about what it looks like but if i log back in here I should be able to get to my availability report. The next piece we had to do here, and here's where we're going to jump in and start writing some new code. The schedule that's coming out here, see, we got to fix the alignment of some of these also. Um, and the, the appearance of when these things happen, and some of these widgets for the date and time aren't behaving quite properly in the browser. The, the date controls just are formatted like garbage, right? This is inside edge and I'm selecting a date and it isn't formatting the date for me that's a problem that's edge that's not me right C sharp devs are the coolest eh, to each their own there, there's some really great uh, folks that are uh, C sharp coders there's some really great JavaScript developers I can't believe I said that and there's a, a lot of amazing C++ developers darn skippy you're right relevant Jesse um I, I said it. Hey, uh, Paul Ducks, welcome. Hello there. So I need to get the data back. I have my schedule. I know what the data looks like for my schedule, but I don't want to get it back in schedule format, which is a collection of these appointments and my recurring schedule. I want to get it back as a collection of the actual time slots that I need to block on the schedule. So I'm going to set up a, I think I'm going to call it a time slot controller that will expand my schedules for a given person. Actually, I'm, I think I'm already doing that in the schedule controller, aren't I? Get schedules for a date range. I also have get schedules for a person ID. So right now, yeah, I'm just returning your schedule. I'm not actually returning the, <coughs> the time slots for you. And I need to return the schedule like this so that I know how to update, how to save new schedule items. <coughs> Drank that a little fast. So, um, I need to return the time slots. I should probably look and make sure that those... We need to create an issue. Um... The data entry for uh, schedules does not uh, currently accept dates properly. That's going to need to be addressed. Um, this right here. I'm going to convert that to an issue. Yep. And Um, I want to put some tabs on, some notes on that. That's a bug. Somebody wants to take a look at that, go for it. <coughs> All right. So, um, I need to be able to get schedules back as a series of time slots so I can paint them in the user interface. Is it an already an issue? It might be. Um, that's different. This we finished. Right? Yeah, closed by PR, so it's still not closed yet. Okay. But actually keying in the dates isn't working quite right. Um, this does go somewhere now. Okay.
So we're going to do this right now, this enhancement. We're going to expand the schedules on the server. Yeah, I think a time slot controller makes sense. So when we get for a specific uh, schedule, given time range, expand it and get all the time slots. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a new controller here. Time slot controller. <coughs> here we go. Um... There we go. I'm going <clears> to <throat> decorate this as an API controller so that it gets enhanced, so that it only cares about and does API things. It'll also do some model validation for things that are submitted. Um, let's define an initial route for this. Um, API time slot. Uh, I can actually do that as like this. So it'll go to API slash time slot because that's the word before the word controller in the name of this class. Um, I'm going to have a public test task I action result for a get uh, get for schedule, right? And we'll have an int for the schedule ID. We also need to receive the time, the date range to go across. Um, yeah, start date, date, time, end date. So you know the range to expand the schedule, to, to look at and retrieve the schedule for. Um, yeah, it doesn't return anything yet. Right. Okay, feel better about that now? Ha! Um, so we need to define this as an HTTP get. That's the verb that we're going to be listening for to do this interaction. But it's a slightly different template here because we're returning a couple things here. Um, this we want to get from route. These we're going to get, oops. From route. Now getting a date off the route feels like could be an issue here. Let's see if we can figure this out. Um, so it's going to be schedule ID slash Start date. Hopefully that. Hopefully that works. End date. And maybe we'll get those uh, coming across properly. Uh, thank you for the follow, en Enrique Tech Fan. Uh, appreciate you joining us. And K the Blade Runner. Nice. All right. That's a cool. That's a cool handle. I think. Um, Let me see here. Let's, um, I, I think, uh, chat room, do you think I can turn back on the follower label and the alerts? I think we're clear of the, uh, of the trolls that were visiting us earlier. So I think I'm going to turn that back on. Yeah. Let me turn back on the alerts. So we had some trolls earlier and I, I turned off all of our alerts and things so that we weren't, uh, we weren't supporting some of their nonsense. There we go. See, I can't exit stream elements unless I've got the window wide enough. That's a that's an issue for me. All right, here we go. So I can get for a schedule. So we already know how to do a bit of this. Um, we've already got this actually written into a couple of tests down here for expanding schedules. Um, right, so we have a schedule state and we expand a schedule uh, for a given person for a certain time. And this expand schedule method, I think, yeah, we need to be able to interact with this. So we need to get the schedule and the dates, and we'll be able to do this. I think we can. I think we can do that just here in the time slot controller directly. Um, so ASP.NET Core has dependency injection available at every level. 
So what I can do here is I can actually receive my database context so that I know how to connect to this. So I'm going to receive my DB context. Uh, sure, I'll call it that. I'll control dot, create that field so it's available. I'll also uh, need to receive, it was the uh, schedule, right? The schedule manager I'll need to receive. Uh, schedule manager and uh, sure I'll call it that and let's create one of those um, get rid of this get rid of that but that's not gonna do rename it like that I really should right isn't there a naming thing that I can do with that oh darn I didn't do them the refactor that works it's like a it's like a thing in editor config isn't it right here um, to specify the naming oh you're welcome Kay the Blade Runner yeah um, I'm at the point where I don't want to dive into something right before lunch but still have a little bit of time before lunch I know that feeling oh I know that feeling oh so well and it, it feels weird, too, you know? Um, all right, so let's let's get the schedule first. Var the schedule equals... I need to get the schedule for that schedule ID that was submitted. So I can get that by saying my DB context uh, schedules first or default based on uh, the schedule ID. So my schedules have an ID parameter. Uh, an ID field. So I'll get the schedule where that matches the schedule ID. This predicate that you see on the first or default, this uh, this is a a, uh, a lambda expression, but altogether the ability to navigate, traverse um, innumerable collections here, this is called link inside of .NET. It's been around since, since about 2008, and it's a way for us to cheat and effectively run a for loop and exit when we find the appropriate thing. Okay, I thought that was banned uh, uh, permanently. Thank you, Jake. I'm going to have to turn off the follower alert. to um, the folks at Stream Elements because it should have caught that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to turn off the latest followers. Sorry about that, followers. So this will fetch that schedule. So this is now a schedule object here. I'm going to say first or default. I should be able to say first or default async, right? And have it, right, that's now, yeah. Um, yep. And I can await that. So that while that operation is occurring over on the database, we're awaiting the interaction. It'll release the thread and operate asynchronously. Um, gotta run, take care. And yeah, we'll be looking at uh, applications a little bit later. Um, okay, so I've got the schedule. I need to now expand it for the date range. 
So I can say time slots equals, um, and I've got the schedule manager, and I can say expand schedule, pass in the schedule. This is something that we wrote previously. Uh, the start time is the start time and the end time. And, uh, what? Microsoft extends, what? Oh, the logger, that's nah, fine. I'm not passing in a logger to that. And why doesn't it like that? Huh? Oh, it's start date, oops. There we go. So now that'll give me a collection of time slots, an I enumerable of time slots, fantastic. So I can return OK, time slots to array. So now I've got a collection of time slot objects. And the time slot is just, right, um, if we walk back up that. Time slot is just a start date time and end date time, along with some duration and a name to go with it so you know what that thing is. Okay. Um, so I've got that collection, I'm gonna return it. See, here's what I'm gonna do. If the schedule is null, so if we didn't find one when it did this, um, I'm gonna return a not found. We didn't find anything, so now those folks that are interacting with this client will get a not found. They'll get an appropriate message that says, I don't know what that is. Hey, Lily Hazel, good morning. Welcome. Um, so that feels right. So now, when I go back over to my availability, uh, close all but this, and I'm gonna go back to the availability component, there. When this is fetching, which is here, it's going to fetch, right, the schedule. It, it got the schedule here, so we can interact with it. The availability that it put into this schedule object So, okay, right, the schedule is, where'd it go? Here. For this page, maybe we do make the schedule manager available here, right? Because when this was doing expand schedule, it put it into a time slots collection here. I mean, we can we can certainly do that. We need the schedule manager then to be available client side. I mean, that can be a thing, right? But the schedule manager right now, oh no, it is net standard. Oh, maybe we're okay with that then. Right? Maybe, can I do that? If I control dot, add that reference. I like that, that it detects, oh, you're missing this reference. That could work, couldn't it? We've got the schedule, right? Which means inside of here, it would expand it here. And then it would know how to paint the time slots. Yeah, I do like it when a problem solves itself. So, let's see what happens here. The problem I want to solve itself is these folks that are trolling with, with the politically charged names.
Nope, what didn't it like? Oh uh, boy. Do I, s I still have it running over there? That's okay, that's... Okay, this might have been the problem that we had before and we said, oh no, we gotta move this. Right, this may be why I needed to pull scheduling out. Right, let's see. There, we're down into test. Uh, oh, here, look, 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 look. We found it. Look at this. Mono linker, error processing method, logger, begin scope and assembly, extensions logging DLL. Failed to resolve abstractions, internal null scope, get instance. Um, we need the null logger to be passed in instead of null there. Hey, Michael Jolly. Good morning. That's what I'm taking that to mean is the linker is having a problem with that. Yeah, it's right there. <coughs> It doesn't like the null logger. Right, if we look at the output there. I think the logger would be able to handle it because it's .NET standard and the linker would be be able to do its thing there. Six hour stream later today. Are you kidding? Woo. Um, that's really annoying. But I'm kind of stuck here you know um, yeah uh, I, I mean that kind of solidifies to me that I need to pull this back hey Leviani hello hello um, yeah let me pull that out um, which means here that needs to come out of the server controller so instead of calling this right we can actually just push those directly into the time slots over here when we get it from the time slot controller um, alright so let's look at this so instead of calling expand schedule here, we're going to want to make those time slots available. Lots of bands today. Lots and lots. Am I going to open an issue with the Blazer team? Yeah, I think I need to on this one. Yeah. This we're good on. Time slot. Uh, logging. Uh, and the null logger. Um, don't get linked properly. You know what, and I don't want to save that. Let's also put in our cheers here as we fix the expand right here. Um, I'll create that method. And uh, the first one was 142 from Carrie. Oh, come on. 
Um, and this is, yeah, <clears throat> 01 of 08. And then we had that amazing cheer. <clears throat> Excuse me, from Fixter Jake. Thank you very much for that. Oh my goodness. Um, all right. So when we expand the schedule here, we actually need to go fetch it from the uh, the server. So we're going to use HTTP client to go get that. So uh, time slots equals. I could actually just wire this right up, couldn't I? My schedule state dot time slots dot add range, and we're going to fetch uh, HTTP client. Uh, get JSON async, and this is going to be a collection of time slots. So it's like that from, and the location of our time slot controller is API, time slot, and API, time slot. And we're going to pass in the schedule ID. Where's the schedule ID? Should be here, shouldn't it? Oh, it's in schedule state. Uh, my schedule state. Schedule ID. Got that now. And next will be the two dates that we're expanding across. Um, so for right now, I will do get date time dot today add months. Let's go back a month to short date string. And we're going to do, we're going to add two months so we go out two months. All right. We need to fix this. This is, needs to be awaited. Which means this needs to be an async task. There we go. You, that's a really big URL. <coughs> uh, but that's all I need, I think, right? Um, now that's over here, so I can say await oh, on that. And I think we've got it. Better fitting message in the build log error lists. For uh, the expand schedule not being built. Yeah, you're right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Musical bookworm. Musical bookworm just resubscribed for four months. Thanks so much for the resub. Four months. That's going to put you into uh, put you into a red hat. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, very much appreciate it. And we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Let's see if this works now. It should make that fetch, and we should start to see it appropriately in the br in the uh, in the place in the in the thing. You know, the place with the stuff. Should start to see it in the uh, uh, grid and the calendars. What? What? No. What did we... Uh, okay, I thought I removed this reference. Uh, no. Um, oh, wait. I removed it from web. I didn't remove it from web client. There it is. Now let's now let's try it. My bad. Removed it from the wrong project. There we go. No. Oh, okay, okay, hang on. In schedule state, yeah. That needs to go. Let's see what we get now. And I'm really not trusting the bell over here. 221 total notifications. Oh, you can't see it behind me over here. Yeah. Looks weird. No. What are we now missing? Time slot controller. 
Oh, because I removed it from over here. Yeah. Because I removed it from the wrong one. <laughs> there it is. Oh my. I know I messed it up. I broke it. I broke it. There we go. Refresh. Rebuild. Do the thing. Right? Right? There we go. It's loading up. Do it live! I'm going to. Here we go. I'll click the availability and... Well, I don't see anything. Did it actually... Oh, boy. Well, that didn't work. Charles, welcome. Um, so what happened when it fetched that? Let's see if we can see what's going on there. Right, there it is, initiating, initializing, paint the screen, do the stuff. Here we go, oh boy. Um, well I think I got the, yeah, that's a problem. Ooh, look at that format. Um, it's not wrong. It did what I told it to do. I think we want to convert these from slashes to periods in between these. And we might get that loading a little bit better. Let's see if we can do that and get this cleaned up here. So when it, do when it does the fetch, and I'm, I'm right up against time here. I've actually got a meeting to get to. Um, right, let's do replace. And we're going to replace forward slash with our, with a period. And I'll do the same thing over here on this one. And take a quick look. And we will, we will commit and set up for a raid and wrap this up. Let's see what we get. Compiling, come on. Uh, here we go, here we go. Here it is. Log back in. Good. You can see the web server doing its thing back here. So, oh, look at that. Let's see what that looks like so we know what we can come back to next time. I'm going to control F5 and see what happens when it reruns here. Everything's executing. It's got its user information. There we go. Look at that. So it did go to the appropriate address, but we got a 500 internal server error. First off, we shouldn't be getting internal server errors because we have API controller wired up. It should actually be returning a uh, appropriately formatted JSON block um, with error details in it. Um, but it's not reformatting the dates appropriately. So we can take care of that next time. Thanks so much everybody for joining me. I am going to commit these changes at this point because I think we're in a, we're in a pretty good place. When we get this corrected, it's going to work and fetch that data appropriately for us. So let me add everything in here. Uh, commit. Um, fetching time slot data from the server. Uh, I will commit that change and push it out. And I'll be back working on that tomorrow. Same time, same place, and we will check that all out right here on stream. You know, we haven't raided that looks like they just went live. Let's set up a raid for Nick Larson. There's the raid call. If you're a subscriber, grab that first line of text out of, uh, out of the chat room. Copy it onto your clipboard. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line of text. We're going to go raid our friend Nick Larson. He's another one of the live coders. And he's working on some technical interview uh, blogging, it looks like. All right, friends. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you joining me. I will see you 
tomorrow. This video, like all my other videos, will be available over on the YouTube uh, channel. We're going to have to edit it down a little bit. Thank you, moderators, for your help in uh, handling some of the trolls that we had here today. I really appreciate it. Get ready to head over and say hello to our friend Nick. And I will see you next time. All right? Take care.